What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So today we are back with part four of the Gowie NX7 build. Such an awesome looking helicopter so far. So on part three, we got quite a bit done. We got the complete tail section, head, everything. Servos are mounted. It's sitting on its skids. So we are going to get started now on making up the throttle linkage as well as the tail servo linkage. So we got to get those made up, get all that done. And then we can move on to starting the fuel lines, get all that done, get the sensor put in. We have to epoxy our magnets, plus and minus magnet in here for our governor sensor. So we got to get that done, get our linkages made. Let's get started. Uh, first thing we need to do is go ahead and make up our throttle linkage. So you're just going to have your two ball link ends and your short threaded rod. Go ahead and get them started on both ends. And then what I like to do is just use a pair of bowling pliers. There's multiple grooves in there. So you can kind of just hold the push rod, give it a good turn and push to get your thread started. Once you get that first thread started, it usually just goes on pretty easily. And then you're gonna go ahead and make this linkage up and you want a inner hole to inner hole diameter of 106 millimeters. All right, we went ahead and got our linkage made up. Now this is just a rough estimate on the millimeter. This is going to change. It's gonna get shorter or longer depending on what we're doing here. So just like on any nitro helicopter, your throttle mechanical setup is very important. We need a properly set up throttle linkage for governor to work like it should for proper response. So we want if you look at your actual carburetor here it's going to be multiple notches so this first notch right here is carburetor closed this middle notch right there is going to be in between those two is going to be half so if we come up here that's half that's full throttle so right now we want to set our carburetor to half and then we're going to come and we are going to install our servo arm. Now we're gonna want our servo arm to face down. Okay, our servo is 90 degrees. It might be off with tooth or two. You can adjust that later on when we get to the governor setup okay, section. So before we go ahead and put our ball end on the servo horn and our ball end on the carburetor, we need to do some figuring out. So we're not gonna Loctite this screw right now. The center carburetor screw that's right here, we're not Loctiting. So we can actually loosen it and move it around. So we need to look at that little notch, which we know is 50%, and we know that our servo is centered, it's 50%, and we need a even linkage. So we need to take our push rod here and say we're gonna start with this outside hole. So we're gonna hold our push rod to this outside hole and see where it lands on our servo. So we know that it's going to be the very bottom hole is where we need to put our ball in because we want a perfectly level and we want a perfectly linear throttle setup. You don't want your push rod up at an angle. You don't want it down. You don't want to go like this and like this because then what's going to happen is you're not going to get even travel between the two and that's what we want. We want even travel. So as this servo moves a little bit, the carburetor moves a little bit. When the servo moves a lot, the carburetor moves a lot. That's going to give you the most linear throttle curve and throttle position and it's also going to give you the best governor response that you can get it is a very, very important step on any nitro helicopter, like the tail setup with positive four degrees, two to four degrees, depending on the model. Same thing with the throttle. So let's go ahead and get our ball end on our servo horn and our ball end on our now carburetor. We're doing the ball links, it's going to be the same just like we did for the cyclic servos. We're going to grab our M2 by 12 millimeter screw, one and a half millimeter driver. We're going to take our carburetor arm and we're just going to start threading. And then once we get to the back side where it comes out, here, we're going to take our M2 lock nut. We are going to get that guy started, and then we're going to trim the screw off when we're done. So after we get everything tightened down, we're going to go ahead, trim the screw off. We're going to use a little pair of needle nose to tighten all of this down. Go ahead, tighten this all the way down. Once you get both of your balls on and get your lock nuts into place, there's no need to have all this extra thread. So take yourself a pair of side bites and carefully snip off the excess just like this and take a file and then you're going to file down this is a little hdx set that i stole from my grandpa 
And then you're just gonna go ahead, file down that screw just so you can get rid of the, the, the burrs and get rid of the sharp edges. Just kind of clean it up, file it down, do the same on both screws so you have a nice clean surface that won't cut or rip anything. And when you're done, you will have a very clean, non-sharp cut off screw. Now we're gonna start and install the arm on the carburetor. Make sure you put back that little star washer. That is very important, that helps it grip. Now we're gonna take a dab of Loctite and we're just gonna put a dab of Loctite because once we set our carburetor, there's gonna be no need to adjust or mess with anything once we make sure that we have that little notch and the center of the carburetor. That is gonna be 50% or half throttle, however you wanna look at it. Now there is a hole right here. What I do is I take a T-pin and I drop a T-pin down in this hole. And that way I have something to hold on to when I'm torquing down this arm. So now this arm is going to be a two and a half millimeter driver. And again, make sure that little star washer don't fall off. So I'm going to go ahead and get this started, run it down. And then right before it snugs up, which is where we're at right now, I am going to find center, which is right here. And then I'm going to use my finger to hold the arm at 90 degrees. And then go ahead and tighten it all the way up. This is going to ensure that we have 50% throttle. We're gonna just doing this without shortening the video so you guys can see. Torque it down. Now we are at 50% throttle. You might have to rotate this somehow to get the T-pin out now. So now we know 100% the carburetor is half throttle, 50%. So now we're gonna take our servo arm and we are going to install our servo arm. So that way it is fully down. We are going to push our arm into place and any micro corrections you can do in the FBL unit, when we get to that stage, we're gonna take our servo screw. Now, if your screw doesn't have Loctite on it, then I would recommend go ahead and Loctiting that screw. Then just go ahead and tighten this screw all the way Now up. our servo arm is on, our ball link, and our carburetor arm is on Loctite, Loctite, and 50% throttle. So now we're gonna go ahead and take our push rod. Now, on the push rod, it will say Gowie on both ends. Gowie faces out, of course. So now we're gonna probably have to shorten this, which we are. So you can see we're very long. So you're gonna go ahead and run both of these in evenly. I like to get even threads in and out so that way one side's not shorter or longer and then get that to the proper length so here. Now we have fully adjusted it to the proper length. So when we slide this on, we are at 50% throttle and half throttle and our servo is at half. So now what we're gonna do is grab our ball link pliers. This makes popping these on so much easier. You can just go ahead, get in there, squeeze, and then you do the same on the throttle side. Go ahead, get in there and squeeze. Now our push rod for throttle is on. Now we can move on to the tail push rod. Now for the tail push rod section to connect the servo to your bell crank, because remember, we've already done the bell crank to the actual tail casing, that's done. So now we need to go from servo to bell crank. So this was already done when I got the kit. I think somebody started this. So this is a carbon sleeve over the metal rod. Now all you have to do is slide your push rod in, add a couple drops of CA. I would personally use epoxy, but I think they use CA, I'm not sure. So we're gonna move on to adding these caps now. These caps are going to slide over like this and there's gonna be one on each end here and here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark it, sand them a little bit, and then we're going to epoxy these caps on, let this fully dry. While we have the epoxy mixed up, we need to go ahead and add the magnet for the actual governor so pickup. So now we're gonna grab, your governor sensor is gonna come with magnets. In those magnets are going to have a plus and a minus. Now, if you notice in the clutch bell, there is going to be two locations, one and two. So you need to take the magnets Come in your governor sensor. Now we're using the X guard. I would prefer to use a backplate sensor like I've used on other nitro models and I use on my personal helicopters, but we have a big problem where we don't have enough room to run the sensor from the bottom of the engine to the carbon fiber plate. So this is just as good. So now get your magnets out of here. Notice that they are stuck together. So these magnets, you're gonna pull them apart and I like to mark them. I'll show you guys that in a second. 
but test fit and make sure that they fit down into your bell, which they are a little tight, but we can make them work. So you're gonna want to mark which one's which, make sure they fit, and then these are gonna get epoxied into place. Now we're gonna set those aside. There is a slot in the frame here, which makes it very nice because we can mount our governor pickup, our governor sensor right to that slot right there with the included screws and we can adjust the height, it is perfect. So that it will be the perfect location to mount the actual governor sensor. So let's go ahead, let's get some epoxy mixed up. Let's test fit those magnets again, make sure they fit down in here and I will show you about gluing them into now we place. Just kept the magnets in the fan the way it is. Now you can see that north and south pole on the magnets. So for the governor sensor to work right, it needs to see the north pole of the magnet. So right now the north and south are stuck together. So this is the north pole on this magnet. The part that's stuck to it is the south pole. So we're gonna take a Sharpie. We're gonna color the top of this magnet black. This magnet, when we pull this off, we're gonna rotate the fan around and that is going to be the black side is going to face up. So now we're gonna go ahead and get our epoxy out and we are going to epoxy our magnets into place. I already went ahead and epoxied one magnet into place. So I went ahead and tapped it down with a plastic ended screwdriver. I said actually a driver, Allen driver, tapped it in with a little hammer. So now we're gonna, we know black is up, that's North Pole. So now we're going to rotate this over and now we need to epoxy the other one into place. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a little bit of our epoxy. You don't need a lot of epoxy and we're going to just shove the hole full of epoxy. Now we're going to take our magnet and we have the black side is the North Pole. So we need to go ahead and put this into place, have rubbing alcohol ready with paper towel so you can clean the excess epoxy as it comes off of there and then we are going to again take our little plastic ended driver and we are going to carefully tap this magnet down it is a tight fit we're going to look at it see where we're at keep tapping and you're going to do this until you get the magnet to go all the way flat. Right. We got the magnet tapped in. We're gonna take a little bit of rubbing alcohol on a paper towel, and we're just gonna wipe off the excess epoxy. So that way it's a clean install. We're gonna reach down into here where some of the epoxy splooged out onto the actual clutch itself with the rubbing alcohol. Just wipe it, get any of that excess epoxy off of there. And then we want to spin and make sure that there is no epoxy that we can't see, like exactly right there, which you guys probably cannot see. So use our driver, a little bit of rubbing alcohol on a paper towel, go in there, clean it up. So now our magnets are installed with the north side up. So what we're gonna do now is set this whole thing aside and let the epoxy fully cure before we move on to the next step. So it's been about 12 hours, a little over 12 hours. So now our magnets are fully cured, epoxied into place. So now we are going to mount our governor sensor before we make up the tail push rod, just because that's what we're working on right now. So we got our governor sensor. We are using the X guard and it is the magnet pickup. And luckily Gowie put us a nice little slot right here in the frame and it is perfect for the governor sensor to bolt to. So now what I did do, sorry for knocking into you guys again, it's really hard when the camera's right in front of your face. So I picked out some M2.5 lock nuts that I have in my little collection. They give you regular M2.5 nuts, but because this is a nitro model, yes, we could use Loctite and it would probably be fine, but we have vibrations and I would much rather have a lock nut. So what I'm going to do is just take the governor sensor here. And again, it is going to fit right perfectly here. So I'm gonna start with the bottom screw hole and get that screw into there. And you will notice that it doesn't fit in the actual frame. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but the screw is too big for the slot. 
which is not a big deal. We could try to force it in there or grab the Dremel and just carefully open this hole up, which is what I'm gonna do. So it actually turns out that I do not have a bit small enough. This is the smallest bit I have for my Dremel. And as you can see, it's gonna carve out a lot of carbon fiber. So what we're gonna do instead is I'm gonna take a good old trusty file and just go back and forth like this and just lightly sand the carbon frame to open it up enough. Now, if you don't have a file or you don't have a Dremel or you just don't simply want to sand and carve out carbon fiber, it's a very nasty material, especially to breathe in. So what you can do is just go with smaller screws. So instead of M2 and a half, you can go with M2s. I want to go with the M2 and a half to have the biggest screw for the best holding power. Again, because it's nitro, so you don't have to use the M2 and a half. You can use M2s, and then they will fit no problem without having to file or sand. So now we just got done filing, and our screw now fits perfect all the way up and down the slot, even though we're not, we don't need all that movement range, but we have it. So now, grab your governor sensor. Go ahead, get your screw put back in the bottom here. And then now it will fit right into place. So now we're gonna take our lock nut and we're gonna go from the top and get the first bolt started. So now that we got the first one started, we're gonna take our second one and do the exact same thing. So you're just going to put your bolt in through there, your screw, and I'm gonna take my old trusty beat up pair of little needle nose. And we are going to come in from the top, which makes it really nice that Gowie has this big opening right here. And then you're going to try to get it started, but it can be kind of a pain in the butt to get this first screw started because the bearing block is in the way. So you just got to try your best to kind of finesse it down into place right here. So I went ahead and just pulled this front cover off real quick because it's made it easier to get to those top bolts. Even though you have a good distance, the top one was being a real pain. So what I decided to do is take the top one back out because of tightening both screws up. So what we're going to do and how I do this anyways, is I take a piece of paper, just a regular notepad paper, and I fold it in half, and then I'm going to fold it in half again. That is the thickness of gap that I like to have in between the bottom of my governor sensor and the magnet. So we have our magnet right here. We're going to take our piece of paper. And we're going to push down lightly, not a ton of pressure, but push it down. So now we are going to tighten up this bottom screw, hold it from the inside, because again, we're running a lock nut. Oh, that's two and a half. We need a two millimeter and tighten this screw up to the point where it is snug. Once we get this screw snugged up, we can then apply pressure and adjustment. So right now, that is where we're at. Now, if you can actually see that gap, so now I got you zoomed in as far as I can zoom you. That gap right there is the perfect gap and nothing is rubbing. So go ahead and spin your clutch bell all the way around, not rubbing. So you wanna get your sensor as close to the magnet as possible, but you don't want it to rub at all. So I am happy with that gap. So now I'm gonna put the top screw in and fully tighten it down and then check that gap again to make sure it's the same gap of our piece of paper folded into that thickness right there. Now, both of our screws are fully tightened up. Nothing is rubbing, which is exactly what we want. But we got the tightest gap that we can get under that governor sensor. Now, if our governor was wired up right now and you do this, it will say magnet detected when we get to that section. So now let's move on to doing the actual rudder push rod. So now we went ahead and epoxied our caps on, let them dry for about 12 hours, just like the magnets. So now we're going to take our ball ends and we are going to thread them on. Do one on each side. Now, manual tells you from center of your ball end to center of your ball end is going to be 320 millimeters, 320.5 millimeters. So now I have a couple of these. So I'm going to insert into one end and then hold this and just rotate and tighten this ball all the way down. And you're going to do that on both sides. So I got our ball ends added onto both sides. 
And then I already went ahead and put the ball in on the actual servo horn. I cut the screw down and filed it flat just like we did on the throttle side. So that way it is smooth and it can't cut you or rip or grab anything. So little nice little touch. So now we're going to add our servo horn. Now we know our servo is 90 degrees. Now we're going to have to adjust it in the FBL. So we're just going to manually put it at 90. We know that our bell crank lever is at 90 degrees. So, and we already properly set the four degrees at the actual tail. So now we're going to stay 90 here and we are going to stay 90 here. So now we need to adjust our push rod and you want Gowie to face out on the actual ends. So now we're going to just loosely set it here and we're going to look. Now we need to rotate this, but I can already tell that it needs to go out about a turn. So now I'm going to adjust this out about a turn and rotate it flat so Gowie can face down. So now we have rotated it 90 degrees. We rotated it a turn out and then added 90. So now Gowie is facing down and Gowie is facing out. So now we're going to go ahead and rest it back up to here. And that is perfect. So we're going to get it popped on that end. Make sure it is 90 again. Come over to our servo horn and get it popped on this end. And there we go. So now we are 90 degrees at the servo, 90 degrees at the bell crank. So now our rudder push rod is officially done. Now we want to check and move our push rod full movement and make sure that nothing is hitting. That the push rod, the carbon tube, it's not hitting on the main gear. So let's check. Full movement, no hitting. It's got plenty of room to spare there. I mean, you can almost get your finger in there. Nothing else is binding or moving. So now we're going to install the screw for the servo. Already Loctite applied to these screws with the BK servos, but if you don't have Loctite, make sure you add it. And then just go ahead and screw this all the way on, tighten it all the way up. Now our rudder push rod is completely done. Let's move on to the fuel lines. So now before we move on to the fuel lines, I forgot we have one last thing to do for the actual build of the helicopter for all the parts to be installed. We have one last thing to do. We have to put our anti-rotation bracket on. So remember earlier in the build, I said do not tighten this all the way up because we were going to have to put Loctite on it. So we're going to go ahead and put Loctite on this screw, tighten this down, and we can install the anti-rotation bracket. Now, one thing I did want to touch on really quickly is about Loctite and plastic. You do not want to use Loctite on plastic because Loctite will dissolve the plastic. Everybody knows that. But this is what happens when you add Loctite to plastic. It breaks and gets brittle. This is the cap off the Loctite bottle, and it has completely fell apart. That's why you don't add Loctite to plastic. Now, moving on. Grab your anti-rotation bracket. It is going to sit down over these bearings and it's going to sit into one spot. Two millimeter driver with these coarse threaded screws. And you're just going to put one on each side. One there. Go ahead on the other side. Add your second one. Screw them all the way down. No Loctite, no CA. They have a good bite. You can run them down. No need to worry or add any kind of holding so now we're going to get started on the fuel system, on the fuel lines. So we're going to be using green fuel line because we don't have red and the other fuel line that we have is way too big. So I think it'll look good. If it doesn't, we can always switch it out later. Not a big deal. So we're going to be going off of the clunk side of the tank, which is that little nipple right there. So that's going to be your clunk side. That's going to be the line that runs to your carburetor. Now this is a regulated engine, a pumped engine. So with that being said, you don't run a muffler pressure system. You have to run a check valve and we'll get to that on the muffler side or the vent side of the fuel system. So for this side here, for the clunk and the main feed side, we need to have a fuel filter or a T. So we're gonna be running this Align fuel filter. And we need a couple different things. You need We need a little fuel line plug. And we also need a fuel line clamp off. Now, I really prefer these style. And these are what they are right here. I prefer these over the little pinch system that you get with the Align fuel filter. I don't like that. I think it looks too big and too bulky. So we have one right here. It's super simple. It just closes and you push it and it opens. When there's a fuel line in there, it pops right open. 
awesome thing to have. So first thing we need to do is we're going to cut us a small piece of this off. Now, you can run clamp lines. I'm going to try to get a cleaner cut of this fuel line because it was not cut clean. So let me grab scissors. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little piece about a quarter inch. And the reason I'm doing that is a fuel line clamp. Now you can use a clamp, but I like to do it this way. I learned this trick from boat guys and it works really good. So you take a little pair of needle nose, you take a little piece of fuel line tubing about a quarter inch and you stretch it over the fuel line. And this just gives you a secondary hold. It gives you a clamp that is free because it comes with your fuel line and it works extremely well. You got to make sure that you get it on there and it'll look like that. Once you get it on there, it works really good. I use it in all my boats and all the boat guys use it for water lines. They don't pop off. I do it on all my nitro helicopters too. It's a great, great idea. And you don't have to have a bunch of clamps or a zip tie or bailing wire or whatever that doesn't look good around your actual nipples and your fuel line. So now we're going to take our fuel line. This is a two foot long piece. We're going to keep it long for now. We will cut it to size in a minute. So we're going to get this fuel line onto our nipple here. So now we got our line onto the clunk side of the tank. We need to figure out where we want our fuel filter. So if you're not going to run a fuel filter, which I highly recommend you do, you could just simply run this up to your carburetor like this and be done with it. But I highly, highly recommend that you run a fuel filter. So we need to put the fuel filter in line somewhere that it'll be out of the way and somewhere it's not going to bounce against our motor mount. So we could do a couple different things here. We can just run the fuel filter a little long and kind of let it flop. Or we could try to figure out a way to secure the filter to the frame, which is what I'm thinking. So I'm thinking to have the fuel line come up and over right to here. So we have no pinching because we don't want pinches. It'll be a bad day. So I'm thinking to run it to here and then come out of here down and up into our engine and we can come right out of here with a nice little short piece to fuel and defuel the engine. So that's what I'm gonna do, cut it, run that fuel line. Here's what we've done. We're coming out of the fuel tank, the clunk feed line. We're going to our T-splitter slash fuel filter. And then we're coming out the bottom of the filter up into our fuel clamp and then into our carburetor. Now, on the opposite end is our fuel filler line. So this line right here is what we use to fill and defuel the fuel system. And it can tuck right into here. So now we're gonna take a zip tie, two zip ties, and we are gonna zip tie this fuel filter to the frame right here. We're gonna go in between the gas tank or fuel tank here and the engine mount. So one on top and bottom. It is important on these fuel filters, there is an arrow. The arrow is the direction of the fuel flow. So make sure that when you use these filters and the metal end of the actual filter itself is the line that goes with the fuel flow. So fuel comes out of here, down, up, and into the carburetor. So now we are going to put it here. We know that we're not pinched off anywhere. Everything looks good like it should. So now we're gonna feed our zip ties through here and finesse them into so we place. Got our zip ties done and secured. So now our fuel filter is not gonna go anywhere. We have our fuel line here. Whenever we wanna fuel or defuel, you can take the line out, fuel, defuel, put it back, holds it in place very nicely. So we have our clamp. So now our feed line system is complete. Now we're gonna work on the pressure. We're gonna go ahead and do the pressurized part of the fuel system. So. On your regulated engine, regardless if it's a 55 or a 105, you're going to have a check valve. Now, this little check valve has a little tiny groove mark right there. I don't know if you can see that, but there is a groove in the check valve. That groove is going to face the fuel tank. So we know that this check valve, you can kind of see that groove there, is going to face the tank, and that's how we install it. So the side that is thinner because this threads together is going to go to the nipple on the back plate of the engine and then the fatter side with the check valve is going to run up this way now 
This engine has a nipple put here. I don't know something to do with they drilled and tapped it. I don't know. That's going away. So ignore that nipple. We're going to put a, a screw in there, Loctite it into place because I don't know why that's there. So I took the fuel tank bracket off the left side so we can slide the tank out and we can get to our nipple on the top of the tank. So what we're going to do again with our little piece of fuel line tubing here is we are going to put that guy onto here, just like we did on the other side, stretch it out, feed this into here. Very simple, very easy. And again, this is a clamp to help stop the fuel line from popping off. Now I have figured because I want it to be clean with the tank sitting here, I want the fuel line to come this way, down and under, because we have plenty of space here and we can run right up to our check valve and we have to put a T in here somewhere. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our line, run it through here and get it out this side here. So we'll use a little pair of needle nose to help us do this. And that will allow us to plug our line in. So now we are going to fit our line right into the top so here. Once we get this pushed down, just like this, get it all the way down. You're going to take that little piece of fuel line tubing and I just push it down. Push it down until it stops. Now this is not coming off. So now we have to try to feed all of this back through the frame here without hurting the fuel line because we don't want to pinch, cut, or mark up the tank in any way. So we're going to kind of put a little bit of pressure and feed it into place now. So now we are good here. We're going to take this line, drop it down in between the frame rails here and kind of come down out the bottom and just kind of feed it through here and it should come out. Oh, sorry. And it'll come out over here where my finger is. Pull that line out here. So now our line is here. So now we need another T. I dug through my little collection and I found a T fitting right here. So the reason why we need another T fitting is because we need to release the pressure of the fuel system while we are fueling and defueling. And I just got that hose back in there. Because if we do not release the pressure, what's gonna happen is every time you pull the line off to fuel, it is going to spit fuel all over the place. So you always want to release the tank pressure. So I'm gonna get that line fed now back. Now we through. have to do some planning so we know that our T fitting is gonna probably fit somewhere right up into here. So we're gonna pull tight and we're gonna cut our fuel line off right about here. And then we don't want it to fall out. So we're gonna cut it off here and then we need to clamp this into place so we don't lose it and we can put our actual little piece on. Now we got our T fitting installed. It is going to be a pain because the fuel line keeps trying to go back into position because we want everything to be tight. So now we need to come off of here and first we can do our little fuel line or vent line out. So we're just going to take this little piece and it is going to just stick right out here for a plug to go in because we don't need it to be long. We just need it to be there for releasing the pressure of the fuel system. So we are going to get this guy put into here. This little line is going to go to here. And then we are just going to run to the bottom of the engine to the actual check valve. So we'll have to get a little bit more fuel line. And if anybody is curious, this is two feet of fuel line so far. So you're gonna need at least three feet of fuel line to completely plumb this system. we're going to flip the helicopter up on its side because we need to get to that nipple right down there. And we need to put our check valve in and install onto our T fitting. So it is going to be a little bit of a pain to do this, but I will fight this off camera and you don't have to see it. So I'm just going to run a fuel line from this nipple here to my check valve to that T fitting and We'll finish the fuel so we system. We got that all plumbed in. Again, the check valve with the actual groove in it goes towards the fuel tank. So we have our vent line coming out the top of the tank, down underneath to our T for releasing pressure, to our check valve and into the bottom of the back plate. Now we still have to remove this nipple here, put a bolt in it and seal that off because that is not needed. 
So I'm going to end the video off here. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. We got the whole fuel system done, throttle, rudder, servo, magnets, governor sensor. So now in the next video, we will start on wiring, getting the FBL mount mounted and figuring out how we want to run all this stuff and how to make it as clean as possible. I have some ideas about cutting a little slot here. So we're going to get all that stuff done in the next series, get this thing finished up and get ready for the first run and get the pipe put on and see what this thing looks like. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Give it a like, subscribe, take care, and have a great day.